That's our unit for today. We're checking it for a grounded compressor. It keeps tripping the breaker. Although the compressor is only two years old, we're going to see what's going on if it in fact is a compressor or something else is causing it to trip off. All right, let's get started. Well, here's the first thing I notice. If you see this, it looks like a uh, 521 or start relay. I think it's either a red sticker on it for the 521. But you have it laying against the cabinet. And it looks like they just laid it in there because it didn't fit into the original start capacitor seating. They have it laid in there like idiots. And it's more than likely the reason why this thing grounded out because it's grounding to the cabinet. So hopefully that's as simple as this is and we can get on with our lives. First of all, we're going to check the voltage on the contactor to make sure that that power is cut off. Uh, it is, but I just always double check out of habit because of me not wanting to die. And not, I don't want to be at the grounding point for this unit. So we're good to go. So now we're going to disconnect that 521, which is what it was because there's the instructions down there. So idiots just didn't put the... Uh, a new ring or support on it, and it comes with a support, so I don't, I don't understand that. But yeah, you never know. And here's the inside of our 521. Looks like. Good luck there. There's the top of it. Underside of the old relay. It looks like that's guts blown out. Good thing they don't have oil in them. And you see the points where it arced over there, where the straps at. Probably led to this problem. Here's our 521 diagram. See our number five going to the black on the contactor. And we see our number five down there, running around going up there to the contactor. The opposite side is the run side. See the run side's red. And you see our number one, which is going to run. What we have is a dual run, so it goes to the common on the run capacitor, and we have that. And then our yellow goes to the Herm side of the dual run. And that's where we are right there. All right, I'm down here at the compressor terminals, and we're going to ohm out the compressor uh, to ground to see if it's grounded, causing that breaker to trip. Since it did not, uh, or did trip again once the uh, 521 was in place. So we're going to try that first. A common pin on top, start and run. We'll see if any of those have continuity to ground. And if any do, they all should. All right, our job for today is a change out. This old train here had a compressor burn out. Someone dropped a new compressor in it and it ate it alive in a couple years. So we're gonna put a whole new system in and flush it out, clean out the lines and get it going right. A uh, four ton train system is gonna be a four ton Goodman system. Uh, you can debate that one. And uh, that's it so far. At this stage we're recovering the gas and the lines. Here. There's our tank and our weight's got to let me know when the tank is full. It's going to be pretty full after this. Put that back up to the outlet. The inlet has a filter to filter out all the junk that's in this crap. Gauges and back over here to the lines. Taking liquid first, then vapor. Alright, this is our little catch trap here. We're going to kind of blow out these lines. I don't want much to get on the condenser pad where our new condenser is going to sit. There's our old train in the recovery unit. There's a good old fan because it is 95 out here today. That feels pretty good. There's our Samsung mini split, which also doesn't work. We haven't got into that one yet uh, for another day, I think, as we have another job to go to after this. Just another Saturday in the summertime. All right, we got our coming unit here and. Look at the line set, try to make some nice bends there to match it up. We'll insulate that and pressure, well, pressure check it, then insulate it. Why insulate it if you're going to have a leak and have to repair it? So, to check it first. A little thermo gel there, lay it on a little thick. Make sure those service valves don't rupture, add a little dryer. So, uh, clean out any remaining particles that are in the line. Hopefully, there's none, but can't be too safe. Alright, at this stage, we're putting nitrogen on the system, and it's been on for a while. We had to set it right above 200 pounds, which is looks like that's about where it stayed. And it's been about 20 or 30 minutes, so we're about to let that off. And we can start pulling a vacuum on the system uh, upstairs. We'll take a look at the air handler in a little bit. I haven't really
really looked at that much because I've been out here working. Uh, also, I had a hard start on that old train. I decided to transfer it over here to the uh, Tan Goodman series here. Uh, it's four tons. It's a powerful compressor. They have an inch and an eighth copper coming out of the house. Uh, I figure it'll give it a little bit more life over the long haul. And uh, instead of it trying to pump all this refrigerant from scratch, pulling all those amps time after time all summer long, every summer, I figure we might give it a few more summers by uh, putting that bad boy on there. So, uh, alright, that's where we're at right now. Next step we'll be pulling it back. Alright, here's our new Goodman air handler. We have our drain, a flood sensor, insulated. There's a cap. There's nowhere really to go with secondary, unfortunately. There's another flood sensor in there. A high voltage wiring disconnect. We have one more return to add over here off the top to come up to this flex up here. It's our connection to our supply duct from before. Goodman, four ton system. That's what our air handler looks like. All right, here's our unit all started up and running. I haven't finished insulating the line yet. Got my clamp on there. And according to our 95 degrees inside and outside, we required a superheat of 30. And with that 30 degree superheat at our suction pressure, which was 155, our required line temperature was 85, and we were 84, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, it's changed a little bit since then, but uh, we're good to go. We're gonna check things like differential and stuff like that, and then see where we're at. Right now, our supply air was 70 degrees, and our return air is around 93, so we're doing pretty good. So, uh, a successful day. Uh, lady's got her air conditioning back on so her and her loyal puppy will be nice and cold tonight <laughs>